and you hear that music, you must know what time it is. It's time to hear something good. And I got a good one for you today. My friend Kelly Martin is here to share something good. Kelly, welcome to the show. This is your opportunity to tell me something good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I've seen a bunch of your uh, shows here in your podcast and enjoy all the uh, information that comes out of it. So it's Thanks. awesome. So this is my little gift to the world. I get to share the people who are in my universe, you being one of them. And I think it's a cool story. You came in uh, post pandemic um, as a referral and we've had the pleasure of working together now for a bunch of months. We just met in person, which is so cool, man. This is, you know, uh, you, this, this whole pandemic thing is crazy. So for the sake of my audience, why don't you share like who you are, a little bit of your history, and then we'll get into some good meat and potato stuff. Yeah, sure. So um, for actually most of my life, uh, about 35 years now, I've been in the healthcare spectrum. Um, my first job um, coming out and even in high school, I worked in the radiology department in an orthopedic clinic um, and kind of fell in love with wow. everything there and became an x-ray tech. And then um, over 20 years ago, moved over to the sales side of it, um, specifically in radiology for healthcare. So have worked with a few companies and, you know, in the MRI and the big iron kind of stuff. But right now I'm focused in breast imaging um, and in the software that, that surrounds that, you know, for patients and for providers. So share with the audience, if you will, the name of the company yeah. and how they're breaking ground in this really important space, because it seems to me like I hear more and more people that have breast cancer. So, uh, you know, I think it's so the work is very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. So the name of the company is Iconopedia. Um, it is a it's a next generation you know software that we have. It's all cloud based SaaS model, um, which allows us a lot of flexibility to um, deliver you know updates and upgrades on a quarterly basis and really keep our physicians um, efficient. You know there was a there was a JAMA study that came out in August um, or so where they did a comparison of specific time frame in um, around January of 2020 to 2019 and then around March, April of 2020 to 2019 covered about five different types of cancers um, and about 280,000 patients. And when they looked at breast cancer, for example, um, we had half the amount of diagnoses, new, new diagnoses in that March, April time frame as we did in January year over year. And, you know, a lot of that was because these facilities, they stopped everything that was elective, right? When the pandemic hit, it was only dealing with emergency um, situations, you know, as they needed to. And they also didn't want to expose those patients coming in for those elective surgeries, right? Or procedures. Um, so we know that they didn't stop. We didn't stop having half the cancer. We just stopped being able to diagnose it and find it. Um, so anything that we can do now, and that's where we're really different from everybody else out there, is that we really show the efficiencies for the staff, um, especially when they're working in decreased capacity. Um, if they had to furlough or they had to reduce the number of people, we can also communicate with patients before they even have to come into the facility. So it reduces their time that they're there. And it just really, the way that we can track everything, um, it just it really helps streamline that, you know, for again, the facilities, the hospitals and the radiologists and for the patients. So, so you, you articulate it so well, which is one of, I think your key attributes, this particular week that we're doing shows, it's all about women in sales. So I, I wish, I wonder if you would just share with the audience what it's like being a woman in sales, number one, and then a woman in sales who jumps into what is basically a startup, even though it's not a real startup, mm -hmm. it kind of is in that early stage growth. And so um, there are things that are unique to women in sales that I wish you could share with us. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, it's, it was, it's been second nature to me for my whole career that um, when I would meet somebody and meet potential client or whatever, that I didn't just go in there and just throw my pitch at them. I didn't just talk about my widget. I had to find a common ground because I it, sometimes, especially early on in my career, that was the only way I could find to be taken seriously. 
sometimes um, was to, you know, get them to to know and like me as a person to want to do business with me and trust that I was bringing to them, you know, a relevant, you know, widget that they needed to look at. Right. So you just start developing that. And, you know, it just has continued. I mean, I've had customers through multiple companies you know, because we develop that common core. And um, when the pandemic hit, you know, for you know, 20 years, I was used to being on the road. I was used to being a warrior. I mean, 100,000 air miles last year. I mean, always going. And it kind of threw a kink into the system because I came on board with this company January 27th. Right. Wow. So then six weeks later, the world shuts down. And how how do you do that when I was brought on to you know bring on sales, but also help with the brand awareness? Um, because we do it so much better than everybody else, but there's just, they just don't know about us, right? So we got to get the name out. Um, so I, it, just through common people that we know and everything, you came into my world. I started doing the LinkedIn with a pro and kind of changing my mindset that, you know, I didn't just put out there about the company, but that was a way for me to let people know about me and um, trust that they, or find that they could trust me and start developing that relationship to then make them interested in finding about what, what I was doing, where I was working and, you know, what I could deliver on that piece. So, so you, you bring up great points always. A uh, couple of things that I want to unpack there, if you will. So, okay. um, you know, and I think a lot of other women face this situation is getting taken seriously, you yeah. know, when, you know, that, that is, so, you know, how have you dealt with that in your career? Number one, and then number two, as we come into this, you know, telling your story, there are a lot of great things in the world that they just don't tell their story well enough and people don't know about it. So if you can sort of unpack those a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, you know, I had, it was funny, I've actually had several male bosses over the years that have told me that they would hire a woman sales rep over a guy any <laughs> Um, because they were like, you know, the women out, the women are used to, to handling multiple things. They can handle a complex sale because they can think about things in a, you know, in a global perspective. Um, you know, you're used to dealing with, you know, juggling your house and your kids and your work and, and making it all fit. And if you, if you want to get something done, you know, ask a busy person to do it because they're the ones that are going to figure out the time, they're going to do it efficiently and they're going to make it happen. Right. Um, so just putting all that together. But, you know, I grew up in a, in a small town in North Carolina. Um, it was a time when, you know, mom was just like, be home before dark, you know, that kind of thing. They had no idea. It was before cell phones and stuff. <laughs> at, um, at five years old, um, the, the five and dime down the street called my mom saying, you may want to come get Kelly because get Kelly, she's trying to get a job down here. <laughs> I love it. So you're gonna get me because I I just always I was never gonna settle for somebody, you know, giving me a handout or just taking care of it for me. I'm gonna do it. So give me a challenge, you know, because I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the mark and I'm gonna go over it because there's just no other there's nothing else to do about it. So I, I, I love that. And knowing you the short time I know you, which is getting longer, obviously, um, I, I, that validates in my mind, you know, right from the beginning, you were like, all right, this is no nonsense. This is what I have to do. I need to learn a new way. And so to your point, your ability to say, okay, all of the winds are swirling around me, you know, I'm going to focus on this. When it comes to telling your story, I think, you know, one of the things that we work on with you and with other people and with other companies is what do you say? When do you say it? How do you say it? So if you can share with the audience some of the things you've learned, you know, in terms of speaking about yourself, speaking about your company and how that crosses over and when do you do one over the other? Yeah, I think that that's always an ever evolving, you know, lesson to learn, right? Um, I have a particular project that I'm working on for the hospital system, and you know, in my mind, I go into it with, you know, script, right. You have your things that you always kind of reel off, and you're going about. And you, know, for us, maybe one of the things is you know the risk assessment and how that can actually increase revenue stream for a facility because now they can identify high risk patients earlier, right? Um, at this particular facility, I was reminded of this just last week. 
I was talking to one of the principals and he was like, yeah, but our reimbursements are kind of low on that piece. But, you know, for these other pieces, as far as, you know, being able to track every finding for a patient or, you know, the efficiencies for the radiologist, those are our hotspots. So reminding yourself that don't, you, you got to listen to the customer, right? They're going to tell Love you it. what the pain points are. And if you're so stuck in, no, I got to deliver my, my hot topics, it's not going to resonate because their currency may not be what I'm handing them. So you got to be able to listen and adjust and make sure that you're, you know, following that because it's going to be different for every customer that you work with. So, so you speak about the pandemic as which is top of mind for everybody. Your case in particular is probably as unique as, you know, people who were in their job, at least knew their job. You had no idea. So yeah. what are some of the things that you learned about yourself because of the pandemic? Because I find this question really fascinating because the good rise, they change, they adapt. So what yeah. did you learn about, what did you learn about yourself? I had to, I had to challenge myself in some new ways. It was good because again, you get kind of stuck in, and it, whether it's your spiel or just the way you work and everything, um, you know, being vulnerable and going out there like on LinkedIn, which I had always considered straight business, right? It was always my company or my company post or about my product or whatever. And opening up that vulnerability that um, I could start sharing, you know, some of about who I am in that context has really reaped rewards for, for me because it's, you know, it's brought back people into my life that I hadn't had conversations with in a decade. Or it's brought people into my life that never would have come into my world. Um, so, and, and even expanding on that and doing like this, like a video um, and a podcast and putting out there, you know, pre-pandemic, I probably would not be having this conversation <laughs> right now. Um, you know, it's just it's exposing yourself and just saying, I'm human, right? We're all human. And let's just, you know, let's just find that place where we can touch and talk and, and find commonality. So. You, you bring up such fabulous points. You make me proud that we work together because what your takeaways were great. I mean, the whole idea here is that if I didn't like you or you didn't like me, let's put it that way, we would have never had a working you know, engagement because it's just people don't do that. They don't get into situations where they don't like the person. And so you talked about focusing more on you. So for the audience, why don't you tell us the personal side of Kelly, like I know who you are, but you're fairly adventurous. And so why don't you tell us about you, your family, your passions, your likes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm a you know wife and mother of two boys. And I say boys, but they're 28 and 21. <laughs> I hear about that. <laughs> you know, there's other men. Um, and I am a, uh, my oldest has a, a, a daughter. So I have a granddaughter, two and a half years old which is she is a spitfire and yeah, she's going to be a handful in, in every sense of the word. But um, we love, that was another thing too, through the pandemic, it was really hard because even outside of work, I love to travel. I love to get out and see new things. And if I could, if I could have a, you know, ultimate dream job, it was probably to be a, a travel blogger, right. And just travel the world and, and write all about it and take it in pictures. But um so that really kind of felt uh, weird to me, especially, like I said, so much air travel last for the past few years for work and stuff. But I did convince my husband during the pandemic, like, you know, the biggest percentage or whatever the, in the U.S. history of, of everybody to um, purchase a travel trailer, an RV. So even if we were just staying local, but getting us out of our house and, you know, safely socially distancing and camping in the great sand dunes or going to Moab or something like that, just trying to um, get outside and experience nature a little bit on it. You know, this, we moved to Colorado about two and a half years ago um, after a very quick conversation with my boss at the time. It was like on Friday, she said, you want to move to Colorado from Boca, Boca Raton. And on Saturday we made a decision wow. uh, and I'm <laughs> we closed on a house out here. So it was just, you know, now we're finally getting out there and really getting to enjoy some of all this great area. Everything has to 
show us. I'm I'm so glad that you went into that about the you know the trailer because that particular part of the economy exploded. People totally. who would have never considered buying that type of vehicle or investing in that type of travel have done it. And a lot of people I know who are senior executives who would have never considered it have done it, have reaped the benefits of it and are seeing parts of this country that they would have never seen because they were so busy traveling to other countries. So, you yeah. know, there is always a, a silver lining. So yeah, work from home market right now. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. So I want to, um, in our last couple of minutes, I want to focus on um, who should be contacting you, you know, when they hear this show and they say, wow, you know, you're doing some innovative things, you know, in this space, who out there is your client or who should be reaching out? Is it someone that has breast cancer? Is it someone who can affect the decision? So I just want you to educate the audience on what's, you know, who should be, you know, paying attention to Iconopedia and Kelly Martin? I'd say that's on both sides, right? So that's the other thing that's been really cool is we've actually had exposure to patients because they lived it, they breathed, you know, they were breathing that, that sometimes it wasn't very timely or efficient. And it's a very stressful situation when you don't know, but there's something potentially wrong, right? For you or your family or your friend or whoever. So I would say the, the breast cancer patient that, you know, experienced it, that knew, knows that wherever they went for treatment, they could do it better that maybe there's a there's something that they could do to make those introductions on the other side on the imaging side anybody that's doing um, mammography or breast ultrasound that is just they're spending so much manual time and they're worried about their accreditations and things that they have to do for that um, we can do it better we can make it easier and we can take that worry off their plate so that they can focus on the patients and getting back to what they really want to do and taking care of the patients and their families. So I'm not sure it gets better than that. Yeah. You know, the whole premise of the show is tell me something good. You have been a tremendous guest. You have been a tremendous client and you are most certainly a <laughs> tremendous friend. I'm so glad that you came into my life. Thank you for sharing something good. Kelly Martin, you're the best. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Take care. Bye.